Hello once again to my fellow HO and 130 Second Scale Slot Car fans. This is Mark Natividad over at West Coast Slot Cars in Los Angeles, California. Hello everyone, how's it going? Happy New Year. And there's a lot of exciting things going on and I do have to share. So another video, why not share it in a video? And before I get started with today's video, I would just like to say thank you to all of you who subscribe and who like and who share their comments and I so appreciate it. And we are one big happy family in the slot car world. And again, I appreciate all of your comments, whether they're good or bad, we are entitled to our own opinions and that's what I like about this wonderful hobby. But uh, I also love sharing. So this is a, a video today about my, uh, well, let me, let me get that going here. <laughs> Oops, without further ado, uh, there's my contact information. Without further ado, this video today is about the Pioneer Camaro 132nd scale slot car. And also a big thank you to Pioneer for making such a wonderful slot car, beautiful slot car. And thank you, of course, to Electric Dreams in El Segundo, California. That's where I bought this beautiful car from and they have so many in stock. And it was hard to choose, but the red with the black wheels, I'm just a sucker for the red with the black wheels and the white stripes. A beautiful car. So nevertheless, let's talk about the car a little bit. And I know that you've probably seen some other videos, but this is my number 44 here. It's a beautiful red. And I'm sorry I didn't polish it up, but it's got my handprints and smudges all over it. And I didn't clean it up because I know that I'll be getting more smudges and fingerprints on it. But it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful livery and uh, livery, livery, whatever way you like to say it. <laughs> I couldn't help that. I don't know if you can see that. I made a little license plate there. It says, you too slow. It's kind of funny. I, we'll see who, who catches that, but now the cat's out of the bag and I gave it away. So nevertheless, uh, a beautiful car. It even has some, on a closer detailed look, it has some metal flakes in it, like a little pearl metal flake, it looks like. So it, it's pretty cool. So once, once I'm done with this, then I can polish it up and get it ready for race day. So uh, it's exciting because Electric Dreams announced their uh, 2022 race calendar and the Trans Am series is, is going to be raced this year. I'm very happy about it. And the allowed models are the Pioneer and also the Scale Electric, but gosh, I couldn't resist the, the Pioneer. So um, let's, let's talk about this car a little bit uh, other than it's, it's pure beauty. Uh, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly going to say that I did have some issues with it and I'll talk about those. It wasn't terrible, but you know, I like to fix things and if I'm getting per upgrades, performance upgrades for my cars, I end up taking a lot of that stuff out. So let's, let's go over what I did and let's go over the things that I felt that I needed to do to get the car to a competitive level. All right, let's get the screws out of here. So the great thing about these cars is they do come digital plug ready, and all you need to do is select your chip that you're using, whether it be for Carrera or Scale Electric, and you pretty much plug and play and program your car, and you're ready to go for some digital racing. So I, however, will not be racing digitally with this car. I'll be running this car on the Cunningham Raceway at Electric Dreams on their wood routed track. So uh, let, let's go over. Let's go over this. So let's take a look at the interior of the car and the inside of the chassis. All right, as you can see, normally this would have a lot more wires and a plug. I pulled all of that out. I went ahead and rewired it. I used some NSR wire and we'll get up to the front here in a second, but that was the first thing. And again, my issue with the car was I was breaking in the motor at four volts and I smelled a little burning and so I, apparently there was a bad capacitor. It may have shorted out on the motor can. I don't know what it is. Nevertheless, I'm not using it and I pulled it out, soldered the wires directly to the motor and problem fixed. However, if you are racing digital and if, if you would have had that problem, you probably would have had to have a, a second trip to the hobby store, return it to where you got it. And I'm sure they would have replaced it. Nevertheless, very simple, very clean uh, this way and the, all the wiring and plugs aren't there. There's even an access door right here for the uh, bottom to access the chip. So that's all closed nice and tight. Uh, let's see, let's start, let's, let's start at the first thing that I did looking at the car. I put it on the track, I ran it, and it was just wobbling all around. So two things that I, I did, 
Uh, one is that I treat the tires. And treating the tires gets the much flatter, and I'll be on the wood track, so it's flat anyway, and I'm sure this will run very well now on the wood track. Uh, but because of the, the hubs, the wheels are actually plastic wheels. So you can only pull these off and put them back on so many times before you, you lose it. So again, these axles, the Pioneer axles, there are no knurls on the axle, so there's nothing to hold the wheel on. And once these crack, they're pretty much done. But you can get another pair of wheels for three bucks, two ninety nine, for three ninety nine, something like that. And what I did is I went ahead and used this same wheel. I pulled it off very carefully. I put it on my Huddy tire truer. I made a little plastic uh, uh, a shim, or a paper shim for the plastic hub, and I put it on my Huddy and I trued the tire on the wheel that I'm using on the specific car. So you can do it the other way. You can get a couple of wheels as guinea wheels, I call them, or, um, or wheels for truing. And you could have trued it on that, but I'm, I wanna use those same wheels. Uh, also took the, the tire off and made sure there's no flashing on the hub and it was relatively straight. Uh, I did break in the, the gears. I put some semi-chrome polish on the gears and I let it run at four bolts. And, I just let that run until I, I couldn't hear it anymore, or at least until it was a little quieter. But it was very loud in the beginning because these are plastic ears. Uh, let's see, I glued this one back on. I actually glued this one on with some Gorilla Glue, and then I used E6000 on this side. And since I had my E6000 out, I also glued in each bushing. I glued in the rear bushings and in the front bushings. So keep in mind stock, the bushings are very loose and they move around, they rattle around. So there was a lot of vibration in the car, even with the body off. It sounded like, uh, I don't know, it sounded like my, my blender I make protein shakes with, but uh, it was very loud and uh, gluing the bushings down helped significantly. So when you glue your bushings down, make sure that you put the holes that are in the top of the rear bushings on the upside. So if you have to oil them, that's an access hole so you can oil your bushings right there. And I glued the front in as well. And you wanna make sure there's no glue residue and make sure that your tires spin freely. So there we go, I don't have power, but you can see. Um, that I think is significant because it's really going to help the car. Um, let's see, again, rewired. I put the NSR wire, I tied the front. And by tying the little front off up here, it acts as a centering device so when this is turning if it if it needs to get put back on the track it sort of self centers so once the body's on there that'll hold that down i also went ahead and upgraded uh, the guide to the wood guide and this is the professor motor pmtr1147 and this is yeah it's for wood wood tracks and i believe it can also be used for scale electric carrera fly and so forth. So it fits really nice on the Pioneer slot car. The guide that it comes with, it comes with the standard guide. It also comes with the wood guide, but there's just too much clearance and it was, the, the plastic on there was uneven. It wasn't molded very precisely. So I just didn't like the way the, the guide was sitting and it was sort of made the car tilt a little bit in the front. And uh, there was another issue with that, but I'll go over that as we get to closer to the body and putting the car back on, the body back on the chassis. Uh, so that seems to uh, really, it's very smooth. The Professor Motor has a little, uh, it comes with spacers, but you won't need it. And you just use the screw and the washer for the top of the guide and just loosen it until it moves freely back and forth. So those are my little uh, things that I do to make a car perform better, especially if I'm racing competitively. Uh, the last but not least, just on the chassis, I went ahead and sanded all the sides down in the rear. Um, any place where that's going to touch the body. I sanded it down nice and smooth with some 2000 grit sandpaper so that I have a little body float when I put the body back on. So all in all, I think it's going to be a good car. I think it's going to be competitive. And lastly on this, the braids I changed over to the slotted uh, competition racing braid and it's very flat very flush and uh, I use that on all my cars that I run on the wood track and it does very well so again that's the slotted competition braid I don't have the number for you but I'm sure you can find it if you look it up on the internet all right and let's go over to the body so I'm going to set that down and what I've done is the <laughs> the old school trick yes you're going to see two nickels in there 
And yeah, this is an old, old trick that uh, I think I learned from a 24th scale racer. And I saw him open up his car and he had all these coins taped in it. And I says, why do you have all those coins taped in your car? He said, well, that adds weight. And I, I mean, gosh, that was so long ago. I think I was a kid when I saw that. And I, just some reason I just remembered, I was going to go buy some weights. And then I remembered that a nickel weighs five grams. So I put five grams up in the front and five grams back here in the rear. And that seems to balance the body out. It felt just like a little light in the front, the body wise. Um, I don't know if they've added weight, but it feels good. It feels that it's going to sit down on there. It's gonna give the car better handling and better traction. So there we go. This is the least expensive way to put more weight in your car. I mean, you can use a dime if you want less, uh, a little bit more a penny, nickels five grams. I think a penny is, is uh, 1.25 grams something like that. Anyways, don't quote me on that, but I I'm, I'm, know that a nickel is five grams, which is great. So that's extra 10 grams. And uh, all in all, let's install this back on the, the body back on the chassis. Okay, a couple things you wanna do with the Pioneer cars is make sure, absolutely sure, that the body fits within the chassis. So the body should be outside of the chassis, not as you can see on this side, the body sitting on top of the chassis. So what's going to happen is you're gonna put your screws back in and it's gonna warp the chassis. And uh, I think the second time I put the screws back in, I didn't catch it and I put it on my setup block and my front tire was lifting on the right side and I readjusted the screws and lo and behold, I just discovered that it wasn't in correctly. So go ahead and make sure that when you do put it back together, that your body is over the chassis. Your chassis should not be sitting under the body with the body on top. So it should literally wrap around the whole chassis. So there you go. Let's put the screws back in. Uh, use my fingers first. Sometimes the magnetic screwdrivers work to a disadvantage and they stick so much that you can't get the screw in. You know how it is. All right. This is not a hobby for people who are not patient. That's for sure. All right, that looks good. Let's get those back in there. Let's get them seated down in there. So I'll, I'll bring them in all the way, not terribly tight, just to when they stop. And then I'll back off them about a quarter turn, half turn, whatever I need to get some significant body float. I want a little bit of body float in the model so that uh, it handles well. So uh, again, I, I don't have a wood routed track here. And because of the COVID spike, Electric Dreams has closed their track temporarily. So I'm not even able to go and test the car out, but I am so looking forward to testing this car out. So there we go, back off my screws about a quarter turn. So there you can see the front, front tires move very freely. Make sure there's no interference there. All right, and put that back on the, the block. And there you have it. So. There's my Pioneer Chevy Camaro. And uh, yes, I'm ready to go. And I can't wait to race this. If you look up electricdreams.com, you'll see their racing calendar. And I believe the Trans Am race is gonna be in March. Uh, yeah, I believe so. March or May, one of those. But nevertheless, I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to it. So these are just a few things that I've done to set my car up. And uh, your comments, your suggestions, uh, like everything is uh, much appreciated and I'd appreciate your comments and I would uh, definitely be happy to get back to you if you do contact me all right so again thank you to all of those who uh, subscribe please uh, click the like please click the subscribe button so that you can be in the loop for my next videos I try to keep them unique and informative and not boring and uh, and fun because this is a fun hobby Definitely worthy of sharing, and I love sharing my hobby with all of you. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Again, this is Mark Natividad over at West Coast Slot Cars in Los Angeles, California, signing out saying happy racing and goodbye for now.